How much more time do you need? <laughs> oh my god. No, Last message he really has to pay I know, he, you guys don't need it. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Good afternoon, my name is Melinda Herring, and I'm the editor of the Ukraine Alert blog at the Atlantic Council, and I'm really delighted to be here. I don't know what terrible misdeeds I did in my previous life, but they were awful because I get to moderate a panel with seven Ukrainian politicians. <laughs> and I have confiscated their phones, so they are going to pay attention. <clears throat> uh, do you want me to take your watches too? Okay, so. Clearly, I'm going to have to be on top of them. Since we have such a large panel, I am going to be roving. They have three minutes to answer questions. You'll hear a bell. That means they need to wrap it up. So the way that we've designed this panel is to talk about uh, the new parties, and then we're going to move in and talk about the older parties. Ukraine just had two rounds of presidential elections, but the real elections uh, that everyone is watching, arguably the more important elections are in October. And we have a lot of representatives from you know, many different parties, and a lot of parties are in movement right now, in flux, and that's what we want to get into. So I'd like to start with, with uh, I'd like to actually introduce the panel very briefly in about a minute. Uh, this gentleman right here is Alexander Donchenko from Samopomich. You can wave or say hello. Uh, Next is Arthur uh, Gerasimov from BPP, the uh, bloc of Petro Poroshenko. Uh, next is Mikhail Lev from Civic Position. Uh, in the center is Hannah Hopko, an independent and chairwoman of the RADA Foreign Affairs Committee. Next is Mustafa Naim uh, with a, a new movement that he's going to tell us about and also a member of parliament. Uh, to his left is Maxim Nefedov, who's also in government and uh, putting a new party together that he will also tell us about. And our final uh, politician is uh, Alexei Rybchin from Fatherland and currently a member of parliament. So welcome to you all. Let's jump right in. I'm going to ask Max Nefedov. Max, uh, tell us a little bit about your new party. It's, it's brand new, about to register, and it's a classical liberal or libertarian party that values individualism and entrepreneurship and wants the state to get out of the way. How on earth are you going to make, how are you going to win with an ideology uh, in a place that's accustomed to social welfare benefits? How do you make free market ideas more attractive to Ukrainians? Hello everyone, well, that's actually why we are making a party, because uh, I'm, to be honest, very tired of this constant talking that Ukraine is a welfare state, that uh, reform ideas are not popular, that reforms are not popular, that we are just some kind of uh, not sizable minority that somehow made it to the government or to the parliament, and, well, what can we do? Uh, I'm very positive, and I think that the polls also show it, that there is a very substantial portion of Ukrainian population, and moreover, this is the most economically active part of the population that generally supports liberal ideas from the point of view of economic liberty, or personal liberty and freedom, and, and so on. Of course, no one ever worked actively with this population. So when you talk about liberalism, not many people have a very clear picture inside their mind. But that's actually what we want to do. We want to mobilize these people, we want to educate them, and we want to form, you know, not only a party, because a party is, you know, is just a cherry on top of it, but a more broad social movement which supports the whole idea that Ukraine should be an open state, not only in economics, but also in many, many other areas. Uh, and uh, what we are seeing right now is that there is quite substantial attention to and, and, and quite substantial interest towards uh, these ideas. And we are actually very happy to hear even from mainstream politicians, from older politicians, I don't know who to, more traditional ones, that they also support it and they also feel the need for, uh, for such movement. And what's the name of your new party? You forgot to tell us that. Well, we, do, we don't have a name yet because we're in the process of registration because right now we have a social movement that is called People Are Important, Lude uh, But we do believe that the party is going to have different name in order to differentiate and in order to let people who don't want to be specific, who don't want to have party mandates or not allowed to have party mandates according by, uh, by the law and public administration, that they can be part of this process. And when do you expect to register, Max? 
uh, well, the whole process is expected to take about a month and a half. Okay. Or two months. I mean, that's just a legal process. We'll be watching that space. Uh, let, let's bring in Mustafa. Mustafa, you and I have talked a lot over the last couple of years about uh, unifying uh, the Euromaidan reformers. And I know this is something that's near and dear to your heart. Uh, but it seems like we're in the same place that we were a year ago. We're still waiting on Slava Vakarchuk to come in and save the day and, and unify everyone. There's seven people on stage. When are you guys going to unify? When are you going to get your act together? <clears throat> First of all, thank you for your question. And uh, I'm very impressed that I am the one who should unite the reformers after Maidan. But that's true that we are going to do that, and that's true that we have some problem about unity and uh, uniting our efforts. What we are doing now, we are of, co of course, we are talking with all groups. And what I want to say first now, there is no chance for us to be in parliament with different groups. And that is obvious for all of us. Second, it is obvious that we need people who will lead this process. And I would be frankly that for many people, of course, you waited for Slava Vakarchuk. Let's be honest. We waited for him during presidential campaign. We are, of course, waiting for him now. But the one thing we didn't like about policy making in Ukraine is what always the leadership groups and leadership parties, we want to make the group who will lead anyway. It doesn't depend on one person. It doesn't depend on names. And now, because we will lose it. And for us, it is not the question of brands, names, or you know, some paper which should unite everyone. We are united by our agenda. Many people in Ukraine, local level, national level. Now we should find out the way how to unite these efforts. And I would be uh, frankly saying that now we are doing that. Maybe not all, everything is open, not all, everything is uh, you know, public, because these issues are very sensitive. But now we are talking with several groups, which I hope next two weeks uh, we will announce this unification process. And we will announce that anyway, would Slava go or someone else, we will be united and we will proceed the agenda of five years. Last we have this these years. And the last point I would say about unification of reformers and et cetera. If you would, we talked about reforms just five minutes ago, two panels before. Uh, if you look what happened in Ukraine during these five years, any field in which you see some changes, any, any field, any sector, you see that something happened, some positive changes, it's about new people. Just look through threes. Public procurement, police reform, energy, uh, f uh, tax administration, everything, only about new people. So it's crucial and critical to have new people in government. I mean, new, it's not young, it's not only young. The people who have different values, have different approach, they're coming to politics not to enrich themselves, but they have agenda, and they have intentions and ambitions to change something. That is our crucial goal for next year, because next year we'll have a uh, local election, and I think it's much more revolutionary. Thank you. Let me ask you one follow-up question, Mustafa. Uh, how different is your party, the party that you're working with right now? I understand you have a new movement as well, in, in Maxis as well. How different are your values from uh, the party that Max is involved with? <laughs> I would say even more. Uh, we doesn't have these differences, and we understand that. But we have different uh, point of start. Because uh, Ludwig was they started more from government, and they started more from not, I mean, government by name, but those people who are in government already. In our movement, it's more about parliament, about politics in parliament. So that's the only one difference. But you're right that we should join our efforts. And as I told before, we will announce it in two weeks how and who will join our efforts to go for parliament election. It definitely will be happen. And it eventually will be answer for all people who are waiting for some process. And we now know that many people around the country, they're waiting for some group or some uh, movement which can say that, look, we are those people who did a lot of things during the last four, five years. And we talk about new faces. You know that Zelensky also says about new faces. And we support him on that. But we are new and experienced. We know how it works. We know how it works in government, in parliament, on the streets. So I think we can be very competitive on that, and we will do it next two weeks.
I'm going to call you in two weeks, okay? You better take my call. Max, I, I want to go back to you for a minute. So I, I've been watching your party develop, or your, your movement develop, and you've had conferences in Kiev, Dnipro, Kharkiv, Odessa, Lviv. You guys have been kicking up a lot of energy. You have these nice Facebook posts, but you guys have a problem. You don't really have any national name recognition. And Ukrainian television stations are dominated by oligarchs, and you guys can't really get on big TV. So how are you going to become nationally known in six months before the elections? Well, first of all, it's again, we are coming back to this issue that we want to have a real ideological party, but then, well, why? But, but you should have some kind of a already known leader. I'm not sure that uh, there are many mainstream politicians who are not only recognizable, but also likable in Ukraine right now. So I'm not, I actually don't know whether it's an advantage and disadvantage right now. Second is, yes, we do understand that this party should be supported by local business. We, we understand that, that it should be supported by people who want to see the new quality of Ukrainian politics, because I honestly think that it's the economics that drive politics long term. And eventually, all of us, we don't only represent new values just because there were some bad people, and now we are suddenly some kind of you know good people or, or, or better people. No, we just represent uh, small and medium business. We represent new industries, creative industries that started in Ukraine. Many of us came from professional uh, services. Many of us came from IT. Many of us came from, from other areas that are able to exist only in a normal, competitive, equal uh, economy. So from that point of view, yes, of course, we'll have to pay for uh, advertisement. We will have to pay for billboards and, and TV. And uh, well, yes, this is not going to be super easy. And definitely the one thing that we, I think we all agree is that it's not like we are going to make a pact with some oligarch and then he suddenly donates us TV time. This just won't happen. So your party or your movement has no relationship with oligarchs whatsoever? No. Unfortunately, we don't have any money for <laughs> Oh, poor and proud. There you go. Okay. Now, Hannah, um, you've also been working uh, with a group of, of MPs and people in government to put together a movement as well that's pro-EU, uh, pro-NATO. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that, your new platform? How d different is it from BPP, from the party of Petro Poroshenko? When I look at the, the values, it doesn't seem that different. Maybe we're missing something. Can you give us an update? In February, more than 67 people signed the manifesto to support EU and NATO integration of Ukraine. And it happened before uh, Ukrainian parliament incorporated into the constitution uh, our vision that one day Ukraine should become a full-fledged member of NATO and the EU. And now with the new elect president and with the uh, uh, parliamentary election. So I, I think it's irreversible because it's written in our constitution that the implementation of uh, association agreement with the European Union to meet all the standards of NATO, this is the key strategic foreign policy. So actually, we are focusing on EU and NATO. We are focusing on security sector and because this is the key uh, when country is uh, at war with the Russian Federation. And it seems like uh, Putin will not stop uh, in uh, attacking Ukraine and escalating the situation in Eastern Ukraine on, uh, or in Azov Sea. And also the key idea for us is uh, to protect what have been achieved after the dignity revolution in different spheres of reform and continue, especially with the focus on judiciary reform. So besides myself, there is Victoria Ptashnik, uh, one of the key uh, uh, reformer focusing on anti-monopoly legislation. Uh, also, um, several members of parliament in defense and security uh, priority uh, topics. Also, Ivana Klimpustensadze and uh, other activists. I think the key to uh, communicate with people what NATO is about. When I visited Kramatorsk, when we adopted these amendments to the constitution, people asked me, Hannah, uh, we trust you, NATO is a good idea, but how to put NATO on the bread? And I think this is something we have to explain people the importance. And I think our movement is um, about uh, improving the communication strategy to the citizens of, Uk of Ukraine to keep on the same uh, strong level of support uh, NATO and the EU integration. And um, I think that um, it's really important, uh, uh, regardless who win uh, parliamentary elections, 
to keep focusing and the, uh, on EU and NATO and also on uh, security besides economic uh, development and uh, economic development, corruption, and uh, even to maintain higher support of citizens as an instrument of pressure on politicians if we see like more pro-Russian forces in the next parliament or the populist when they will try to uh, minimize or um, the level, uh, this key strategic goals. Thank you. I have, I have one other question for you, Hannah. Uh, you unfortunately are the only female uh, politician on this stage, which is really a shame, but you're also, the, you've also achieved a lot. You're the chairwoman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. You travel actively. You have a small daughter, but there's not many women like you in parliament. What more should Ukraine do structurally to get women to run for high office? In 2015, we adopted the law which helped uh, more women, like 30% of women, to be included in party list during the local election in 2015. So I think through um, gender equality or providing like a quotas for more uh, um, women representation in party list uh, and also compensation, like Samopomich is receiving now extra money for having more women in their uh, party list compared to other political uh, parties and factions which are in the parliament. Within these five years, we also adopted a law on uh, uh, state financing of political parties to uh, um, minimize the influence of oligarchs and provide state money for political parties, for uh, social billboards and others. I think uh, important for us to adopt the electoral uh, code for this parliament in the next uh, two months and also to work with uh, public broadcasting to make it more professional, more competitive to oligarchic TV channels and more shift of Ukrainians to social networks uh, uh, just to uh, um, neglect the influence of uh, oligarch. And also, I think, crucially important to economic reforms, which I support Max Nifodo, because this, this is about middle class. Yeah. Having uh, the middle class in Ukraine, this is the instrument of countering the populist uh, oligarchic influence on party building, and uh, also parties will be more free, not proposing people what they expect. Uh, but really pushing and pursuing the agenda needed for country survival and also for people for the long-term uh, uh, perspective. So this is uh, important and uh, um, I think uh, my experience from 2014 when one party was used as a platform to unite different groups uh, business leaders, uh, civil society representatives. This was a good experiment that we have to learn the lessons for these parliamentary elections to avoid some mistakes which Samopomich did within these five years being in the parliament. Thank you so much, Hannah. Now let, let's uh, bring in some of the older political parties. Alex Rybichin, uh, Princess Fukuyama said, Ukraine needs political parties. And he's absolutely right. You could argue, and I'm not sure I... I, I'm the moderator, so Fatherland is arguably the only real political party in Ukraine. If you look at the political science uh, literature, it has regional roots, a defined ideology, and it may outlast its leader. Uh, but you guys got killed in the presidential election. What did you guys do wrong? Did you run the wrong candidate? Did she, you peak too early, or did you make other mistakes? Okay, Fatherland or Motherland, as, as, could, as somebody could, could joke. First of all, like, I'd like uh, to thank those people who brought us here. Like, uh, thank you very much. For me, as a person from uh, academia experience, uh, with academia background, for me, I, I, I dreamt to be in, in Stanford University. And as a person who championed for a lot of a green and climate change reform, like for me, it was a dream to be in California. So thank you very much. And answering to your question is, like, I guess the Stanford University is the best place to speak about failures. Because as we even uh, find out yesterday, Stanford professor saying, like, without failures cannot be a success. So I, I, I do hope that these failures that we received during this parliamentary campaign will uh, brought us to uh, new successes. And believe me, Yulia Tymoshenko didn't set her last world uh, in uh, Ukrainian politics and with her experience and with the team that balance experienced people in politics and new one. And I guess this is my recipe, what Ukraine do need, not only like new people, but like balance to, with the people who are able, like for example, we learning what to do and what not to do from the people with this kind of uh, great experience. So basically, 
with the skills that our team has in especially anti-crisis management, I guess uh, Ukraine will uh, definitely need us. But why did you lose, Alex? That's my question. Yeah, why did you um, guys get killed? Yeah, this is like, we already analyzed uh, what was our problem and like basically for me being in, in my 36 year old to participate in a decision making for one of the front runner, it was like a like, huge and great and but painful experience with the result that we have. Basically, sometimes we trust to people when we shouldn't trust to them. Sometimes we didn't, like we trust to intuition rather than the data. Or we didn't have the data and trust to, to intuition. Sometimes we neglect the factor of the social media, you know, rather put stake on a television or to like just a gathering with, with the people. But I, I, I'll, I'll tell you like, uh, I guess the, more young reformers in Bukovina now have more confidence because those advices that we gave during the campaign that didn't uh, run to the campaign, like now, like uh, we were right. So we received more confidence in advising to our leader, to our party. So I guess this failure will make us more stronger. Okay, great. Now, you guys spend a lot of time developing something called the New Course for Ukraine. Lots of graphs, uh, very technical, very heavy. Um, are there going to be tweaks to the New Course of Ukraine, or should we expect to see that sort of as the, the document that drives your strategy around the parliamentary elections? Uh, definitely. Like, what is New Course for those people who doesn't know? So for, like, half a year before the election, we started earlier, definitely, and we organized a lot of, like, expert group. It was not a part of Batkivshina team, so a lot of the people now in, like, who participated in our expert roundtable are now in Zelensky team, and we are happy that they are like, communicating the ideas that were adopted in this kind of new course. Uh, so if it will be realized, because it's like a professional alternative, and I would say that it was only one alternative like that was pushed on a scientific base during the campaign. But like, what was the problem with the, with the new course? Like first, it, it went against the mainstream. Sometimes it went against the, I don't know, Washington consensus, against the kind of some IMF advisors, against the uh, diplomacy mainstream because we advocated for like more Budapest agreement, like against the, uh, again, the current status quo in, in Donbas. And when you are against the mainstream, you are like heavily criticized and we don't have a capacity to advocate more for the new course. And the second, I guess, also big problem, it was like complex and sophisticated. While people uh, tend to be like, t tend to vote for something more simplistic, what we see, uh, what we see in Ukraine. But definitely, this is like the problem of all liberal minded people how to build a liberal economy in a poor society. So basically, for example, uh, like we with Hannah were champion in climate change. So we, like Ukrainian parliament, because of like us and some other people, were like second parliament in the world to ratify Paris climate agreement. But it will not bring us like uh, electoral bonuses with Hannah because nobody in Ukraine will vote for climate changes. For example, when you do and promote some renewables, like you could be a reformer in Kiev, anybody say like, yeah, great people like do renewables. But when you come to, uh, to villages, to like a smaller city, uh, renewable for them means like to burn wood and cut the gas because they cannot afford, you know, the heating cost. So it, it, it's, you know, it's like ref being a reformer in Ukraine and being a reformer in Kiev and being a reformer in the whole, whole society, it's like, it's something different when you promote, I don't know, immobility uh, in Kiev and I guess in, 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 in Lviv, and you can come to region and you know, gran grannies will come to you on a bicycle that are older than you, not because they are like, climate friendly or environment, because this is the only thing that they have. This is like, uh, I like in Batkivshina, that you see a real situation in Ukraine and you are trying to adopt all your you know, Western educated, all your strategies that you have to the real life of Ukraine. So this is what the new course is about, an alternative to the current regime and, uh, uh, and a plan how to create a middle class, how to fight with inequalities. This is definitely what we will promote further. Great, thank you, Alex. Okay, I'm gonna bring in so, some more of our gentlemen on, on this side. Alexander uh, Danchenko, your party, Sum of Pomich, was the great hope of the West and Ukraine in 2014, and it's essentially run itself into the ground. Uh, last month, five MPs defected. You've just defected, more people are defecting. You've lost some of the most talented MPs who were elected in 2014, including Hannah Hopko. Uh, because they had ideas that didn't conform with the party leadership. Is it time for Sama Pomich to reboot? <laughs> it's so difficult questions for me because <laughs> three days ago when I am uh, fly from Korea to Washington, I am, uh, was a member of Sama Pomich party, but... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I am uh, officially, I am continue uh, like a uh, uh, member of uh, Samopomish party, uh, but really we are 
left uh, from uh, Summer Pomish two days ago with uh, uh, five MPs and uh, three and other MPs from uh, uh, Summer Pomish fraction. Uh, uh, also, uh, announcement that they will be not support uh, Summer Pomish in the next parliament election. And uh, our fraction, uh, around uh, nine MPs now left from our fraction. Uh, it's time for reboot uh, or not for Summer Pomish. I'm uh, personally think yes, but uh, it's questions not uh, to me now. <laughs> it's questions to uh, management Summer Pomish party, to Mr. Sadovi. Uh, my personal think yes. Uh, Summer Pomish uh, need to do a lot of changes. Uh, and what would those changes be? Uh, guys, <laughs> uh, it's not correct for me now. It's really. Uh, uh, last one and a half year, uh, I and uh, my colleagues we have a lot of uh, meetings with Mr. Sadovi. It uh, was m more than 20 meetings in Lviv, in Kiev. And uh, we tried to push him to uh, do some changes. We show him our vision. Uh, what it will be best for uh, some Pomish uh, party, uh, where are our mistakes, uh, what we need change, uh, where are our strategy. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, management of some Pomish party don't hear us, or maybe uh, they don't want to hear us. Yeah. Uh, we continue our work with the some Pomish fraction in the parliament because we think it, uh, we should be work. Uh, until end of uh, uh, this parliament, until October, <laughs> in a fraction, because uh, a million of people give us this mandate uh, for working in uh, uh, parliament. Uh, but uh, I uh, would like to say you that uh, uh, I am proudly say you that Samopomich is the best fraction in the parliament. Uh, we create uh, uh, more or, uh, reforms draft of law than all in other uh, fraction. Uh, we uh, work all possibility from us for uh, anti-corruption uh, uh, strategy in Ukraine. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now let's uh, turn to Mikhail. Uh, can you tell us about uh, civic position? How is it different from uh, what Mustafa and Max laid out. It, it sounds pretty similar in terms of the ideology. And your party leader just ran and lost for the third time. Why should voters give you guys a shot? Thank you, Melinda. Uh, hello, everyone. It's a great honor uh, to me to be here today at Sanford. And uh, I'm sincerely grateful uh, to the inviting party for such opportunity and for such panel and discussion of uh, really uh, important political issues of Ukraine and um, the key challenges facing our state after presidential campaign and before uh, following parliamentary elections. Uh, well, uh, to tell the truth, uh, I don't see any differences uh, or discrepancies between our uh, political parties or social movements, uh, speaking about uh, Ludo Vazhlivi uh, and uh, Mustafa Nayem part, party or movement, I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, what it what it should be, uh, and uh, I'm sure that all we have the same values and we have the same views on the processes of economic, social, and security development of Ukraine. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Ukraine still remains the state where people vote not for ideas, uh, ideology, or teams. Uh, people vote for leader. And uh, everything that uh, I have mentioned go behind and after it. And I'm sure that Mr. Gritsenka and his party uh, is in a lack of, as we call them, new faces. And thus I hope that in summer he will work on uh, that and uh, united forces of the initiative of Diznamo, Ludo Vazhlivi, and even uh, party of uh, Svetoslava Karchuk. Uh, I, I want to remind uh, that he uh, took... Uh, fifth place and uh, obtained more than a million and a half uh, of votes and uh, it's uh, really success and good uh, result and I think uh, 
uh, it says that people trust him and uh, will vote uh, uh, on parliamentary elections. And uh, I want to make clear why people should give a shot to Gramadianska Pozitia. I'm sure that besides the language, army and religion, the main thing for which people strive are peace and financial welfare. Uh, thus the development of economy, powerful prime minister and government is the main goal of the next uh, parliament and coalition. Mr. Grusenka is able to become that person. Uh, the Gromadanska Pozitia already has an economic program with a prepared draft of laws uh, aimed to bring uh, more than 40% of economy out of shadows and to get uh, rid of corruption, flaws and schemes. And for example, uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, those include uh, trafficking and violations of customer rules and treasury, treasury losses estimated about uh, 100 uh, uh, billions of grievances per year. Uh, another is offshore schemes, estimated uh, 65 billions of grievances. Uh, schemes on, of taxes uh, violation, and it's uh, near uh, 30 billions of grievances. And uh, if sum up, it's more than 450 billions of grievances losses every year. It's a uh, uh, very b bad situation, and uh, we need uh, to solve it. And uh, a powerful and uh, uh, powerful uh, prime minister uh, should help with it for Ukraine. And I think Mr. Grosenka could be uh, this one. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. Okay, now let's turn to Arthur. Thank you for being so patient. Arthur, uh, your party just got beat really badly in the presidential election, but I'd like to congratulate Mr. Poroshenko. He was a very graceful loser. He conceded before the results were final, and that was very big of him, and I think it set a very good precedent uh, for Ukraine. But I'd like to know, how will your party apply what it learned from the presidential race to the parliamentary elections? Will Petro Poroshenko finally get rid of some of these dubious business ties the West has urged him to get rid of, like Kononenko? And how will you seek to reposition yourself for the parliamentary elections? Uh, loss, at a first glance, at a first glance, yes. But I think uh, this is a loss which was of two victories, because uh, after five week, after five years of uh, Mr. Poroshenko presidency, what do we have? We have democratic Ukraine with democratic elections, with democratic processes. Even here, we showed it to you, <laughs> with uh, freedom of media. And uh, to show you the way we, and the distance we passed, Linda, do you know what does it mean? $12,000. It's the money all Ukraine as a state has in spring 2014. We didn't have army. Do you know what does it mean? 409 kilometers and 300 meters. This is non-controlled part of Ukrainian border, and we have it now. What does it mean 396 kilometers? This is the front line in Donbass. 7%. We lost 7% of our territory. And this is the country, this is the figures, this is the facts about our country we received in 2014. And at the moment, for example, the country on the accounts has 1.5 billion. This is the country, 12,000, 1.5 billion dollars. Next point. We have army, one of the strongest on the continent. We have normal, finally, banking system. So houses created, walls are created, roof is created. So for the next president, for elect president, it's time to make renovation inside the rooms. And to know what we learned from the campaign, from the presidential race, first one, we lost communication. Because we didn't communicate the achievements we did during the five years. Truly speaking, guys, we did the history, but we did not communicate the history. And this is the main lesson we did. Uh, did we do mistakes? Of course, yes. Because if you are doing so tremendous number of changes in so short period of time, of course we, are doing, we did, did the mistakes. Because according to my opinion, I am recently in politics, I spent all my life in business. Only those people don't do the mistakes who are doing zero or nothing. And uh, especially taking into account that all the TV channels belong to oligarchs, <coughs> when all your mistake of $1 price by PR is going to $100 price, and all your achievement, let's say $1,000 price, is put down by PR and media to $1 price, it's a bit complicated yeah, to communicate. And uh, what we are going to do now? First of all, uh, communication. Communication, and one more time, communication. Second one, you know, what we will renovate the, our party. We will organize primaries. 
And uh, what is really very good from this presidential campaign, many very bright, very great people participated in our team, and now we are ready to uh, include them into the team. Immediately after inauguration of the elect president will be the party congress, open party congress we will provide and we will openly tell about ideology, strategy, etc., etc. And uh, the mostly things what we are going to do, war issues because we are in the state of war and economical development. That's great. it. Thank you, Arthur. So you mentioned that you have a lot of great people who will be running or who are part of the party. There, you have some not so great people too. Why hasn't your party sacked Lutsenko? Why have you stood behind a failed prosecutor general who hasn't gotten to the bottom of the Maidan killings and who is alienating the United States? Why are you standing behind him? Uh, first of all, uh, I don't want to tell that everything is really, really very great in the prosecutor office. But let's be again, like I told you, yeah? $1 price, $100 price. $1,000 price, $1 price, yeah? Mistakes and achievements. Did we do mistakes or, I mean, are there some kind of mistakes in the prosecutor office? Maybe, yeah, because, you know, I don't want to touch this issue. But, as I told you in the morning, 1.5 billion Yanukovych money returned. I think in any country in the, in the world, prosecutor will tell that this is the success. Everybody in Ukraine is trying to tell for us this is just peanuts. 1.5 billion dollar peanuts, sorry. Next point, when we are telling about Maidan issues, I really want to, do, to be investigated it as soon as possible. And we did, the uh, prosecutor office did a great job on this issue. Did, did they do any mistakes in, on this road? Yes, they did. But just one case to remind. Uh, remember the events 1991 in some Baltic countries when the Soviet army killed a lot of people uh, during the um, uh, independence uh, came to Baltic countries. I, if I'm not mistaken, in, um, in Vilnius. Just for your information, do you know how many years after this event was finally a uh, decision uh, about investigation, a court decision? If I'm not mistaken, 15 or 20 years. This is not the case for Ukraine, for sure. We need to do in Ukraine as soon as possible, but just to show you that Baltic countries, which are perceived by Ukrainians as an example in many issues, I provided you the example by time. Great, thank you very much. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears and I'm going to fire questions at them and they have two minutes to respond. So we're going to talk about uh, the three big issues that voters care about. We know that voters care about the war and they care about the economy. We've heard that over and over again today and they care about corruption. So let's start with the economy. It stinks. Ukraine is now poorer than Moldova, according to the IMF figures. You have a serious brain drain problem that's only going to get worse. People can make four times more in Poland and the Czech Republic. What concrete steps will your party or you, if you don't represent a party any anymore, take to make, <laughs> sorry, uh, the, the economy grow beyond a 3%? I'm gonna start with Alex Rybichen. And you have two minutes and they, you'll hear the noise again, so please be conscious of that. Okay, this is still a challenge for a Bakishina member to present a new course in a two minute, and I guess this is the reason what we need to, to think how to There's present it. There's seven of you, come on, you're yeah, wasting time, how to go. Present it, <laughs> how to present it better so basically we need to, to build up a middle class of the people you know and to do a lot of a lot of sophisticated uh, mix of liberal uh, you know dirigist and innovative innovative reforms uh, but you are completely right if we will not succeed in reforming this people will just leave to Poland and the Czech Republic but as I said like we did the new course and we are quite happy that a lot of people who like like participated in, in building up this new course are now in Zelensky team uh, and they are like communicating the things that we have so we have a real proper alternative and if it will be implemented it will help to solve a lot of Ukrainian uh, problem but if I would say on my on my behalf like uh, one of the key things to Ukraine uh, is uh, like low hanging fruit is energy efficiency we are like completely energy inefficient nation and if we will solve this it's like it's like it's like uh, like low hanging fruit and we will able not to consume Russian gas or gas from like whatever uh, we could save a lot of energy and this kind of uh, money that could be invested into into the economy this is kind of the crucial stuff for me that I will be focused uh, I hope next five years. Thank you so much. Max, your turn. 
Well, first of all, uh, I don't subscribe to the bleak uh, picture that you've painted because I think that having 13 consecutive uh, quarters of growth uh, during the time of war and economic aggressions that Natalia mentioned is actually an achievement. And had we not invested 5% of our GDP into the military expenses, and had we just invested it into any public spending, you know, increasing pensions and consumer spending, or road construction or whatever, we could have seen much higher growth numbers. What needs to be done, I mean, everyone knows what needs to be done. I mean, there is broad consensus among all experts in Ukraine. It's only about capacity and desire to, to do so. So yes, we need to open the land market and uh, make it investable. Yes, we should do something with state property and get rid of the huge amount of state land, real estate, companies, and so on that only fuels uh, political corruption. Yes, we need to continue reform form of the energy sector and energy efficiency and also diversification of energy supplies. Yes, we need uh, to work with the business climate and continue moving forward in doing business uh, rankings and, and so on. It's all about implementation. Very often this implementation is not even about some kind of oligarch opposition or breaking some kind of consensus. It's about the team of people ready to implement these, uh, these changes. And that is the reason why we actually think that we need more new people, more professional people. One last comment I definitely want to make. Uh, we've heard already dozens of times about corruption here in different panels. We hardly heard anything about professionalism. Everyone loves to fight corruption. Everyone says that all Ukrainian problems are about corruption. I can assure you, after four and a, uh, and a half years in the government, the vast majority of problems in our country are about lack of professionalism. Great. Thank you. Ms. <coughs> I would agree with what uh, Max said, and uh, even what said by uh, Artur about the achievement of Ukraine. It's true that we did. But, you know, when you're talking about the economy, you should say about engine, which brings economy higher and make it move. But the other side, we have chains. And we should lift up this change. What is that? First of all, juridical reform. For all investors, investors in Ukraine, the main problem is they don't have rights and they don't have any possibility and options to have justice. That's the biggest problem. The other thing is law enforcement agencies. Again and again, I would repeat, the mechanism and the schemas of Mr. Yanukovych's time came back last five years when prosecutor office, secret service, national police jointly, they're dividing and sharing the market and saying which company should be attacked. That is dangerous, it's impossible to work on that. The third thing is anti-monopoly com com committee. That's the heart of all monopolies in our country. Unfortunately, we still have monopolies in energy, energy, first of all, Mr. Akhmetov, he is the one of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not against Akhmetov, he can be a big business, but he should some, to do something with his monopoly and with his vast interest. And the last point, we should, finish anti-corruption reforms. If anyone would say that we can deliver some result when someone is doing something like Marx in government and someone is stealing money, that's, you know, we cannot be, you know, kind of successful. At the last point, all those people who did something in government, in parliament, in all fields, they were attacked not by those people who are not professional, but by very professional corruptioneers who knows how system works. We doesn't have problems with professionals. We have lack of professionals and patriots. That's the problem. Because we have a lot of professional people who are stealing money, and they're working very efficiently, much more efficient than we are. That's why we should do something with our party, with our teams, to grow up and make structures and to run country without them. Thanks so much. Hannah, your turn. Uh, in the near future, what is achievable? Because we could talk a lot about privatization and why we adopted the law, but still it's stuck in the government and because there is a competition between different oligarchs. 
who will keep strategic objects. So in the near future, it's important for this parliament to finish the decentralization reform, because this is uh, another way to destroy corruption through the vertical power that before the people from uh, regions, they used to come to Kiev to uh, pray for money for their uh, regions. So we destroyed this mm -hmm. scheme, and now it's important to uh, finish and to provide financial resources to fiscal and budget decentralization, because this is uh, economic growth. People who are free from key of pressure, they are interested in the development of their regions. So uh, I started working in the parliament and were promoting decentralization reform. And this is my duty and obligation to finish together with the government and Prime Minister Groisman, who promised to finish decentralization to cover now it's 30% of Ukrainian territory covered by amalgamated communities. We need to reach up to 100. So this is one. Second, Energy sector reform. Um, uh, my task as the head of the Foreign Affairs Committee to stop Nord Stream 2 working with the US uh, government officials and other partners from European continent. I think this is important for us mm -hmm. to keep focusing and demanding from the US sanctions, but also to bring foreign investment into Ukraine and gas extraction industry. Because this is another way, mm -hmm. when we bring more European and American companies to Ukraine, we will receive in return political protection yep. from their uh, governments. I think this is the key and there is also some sabotage of bringing it here. And also, as a member of parliament, I'll do everything possible to stop such people like Kalamoisky, who is now trying to sue Ukraine to return back his uh, bank, private bank, because he's, he was frauding, stealing from budget uh, five billions of US dollars instead of giving this money to army, to social economy. So this is like a key sectors where we need to work in the nearest future. Fantastic. Having MP ma mandate and opportunities. Thank you, Hannah. Michaela? Uh, not to repeat uh, the same things my colleagues uh, have already told. I want to say that uh, all these things are included uh, in the program, uh, to the program of uh, Mr. Grusenko and Gromadianska Pozitsia. And uh, uh, speaking briefly, uh, I think we need uh, to do uh, several steps. First of all, is uh, accumulation of uh, internal domestic resources. It's uh, more than uh, 450 billions of grievances per year. Uh, and uh, the second is to, uh, through reforms uh, of judicial and law enforcement systems, we can enhance uh, foreign uh, investments from 2.6 uh, billions of dollars uh, to uh, 28 billions of dollars per, per year. It's great resource for Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. You don't want more time? This is custom. Custom. Customs? I, I would add custom. You'd add custom. Possible. Okay. Yeah. You'll be in Kiev's political party, we will be at. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, your turn. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for all the speakers from opposition, especially for evaluating five years of presidency of Mr. Poroshenko. That uh, economy is growing, many quarters. Uh, we have stable currency. We have profit of the state budget, more than 600 million US dollars. We have now 1.5 billion instead of 12,000 US dollars on the account of the state. So. The question is that economically, we not only can promise something, we already did some important things. About the things we are going to do. First of all, we want to continue. Judicial reform, yes, it's extremely important. Is it finished? Not yet. It's, it was started less than three years ago. Less than three years ago, let's be fair. Second point, open land market. Yes, we're totally in support of that. Anti-monopoly, totally support it. Big privatization, totally supported. And I want to remind you that this parliament, uh, together with the President Poroshenko, uh, adopted new law about LTD, famous law, new law about privatization, new law about bankruptcy, extremely important documents which are good base for increasing of our economical growth. And also uh, about the new things, we want to <coughs> finalize the story of the uh, income withdrawal tax, and we, you know, we are strongly in favor to adopt this draft law in the parliament. Also, we are strongly in favor to adopt in the parliament a law about the financial investigation service. That's just briefly a few things. But generally, as I told you, we, as a, one of the main issues and one of the main strategical goals of our party, for the next five years, we'll have not only the war issues, but also the economical development things. Thank you. Arthur, let me ask you one question. I'm not sure about one of your responses. Does your party uh, support removing the uh, powers of the SBU uh, to raid businesses? 
um, yes, yes, we supported it. Because if you will analyze, if you will analyze the draft law about financial investigation service, you suddenly will realize that inside this draft law, all economical things are going out from SBU, from police, from uh, prosecutor office, and going to one analytical body, financial investigation service. It might, it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mustafa or Hannah, but the bill has not passed. Am I right? No, a bill not the passed. The bill is not even submitted. <laughs> but you know why? <laughs> you know, because a lot of people from DPP not voted. No, BPP supported it at so full. We adopted the law on national security last summer before the NATO summit in Brussels. Yes. And this is the framework uh, legislation. <laughs> now we need to submit the legislative package which includes uh, state security service reform, intelligence service reform, uh, uh, procurement uh, um, sec state secrecy uh, law. So this is the package and parliament parliamentary oversight committee. The law we already submitted with the group of MPs. So now state security service reform either because the concept is ready. It's developed together with our partners from NATO, EU and US embassy in Kiev. So now we wait either uh, current president on the new elect will submit this or MPs could do this. But the, quick, the key question is political will in the parliament. As it always is. Mustafa, you have a uh, tiny response. Thing, let's be honest, what's happened with this secret service and what is going on there. The law about uh, financial service, which financial uh, investigation service was invented three years ago by government of Mr. Groisman. And the leader of this process was Mr. Daniluk, who is now in team of Zelensky. He was undermined. He was attacked by the prosecutor office. And the bill, which now proposed by the president, says, OK, we will shift everything from Secret Service. But who will run this office? Who will put the head of this office? Mr. President. That's a joke. Because we invented and we developed draft law, which was really satisfied all our international partners about financial investigation body. And this should be among, it should be civil, it should be among under Minister of Finance or Tax Administration. It was open.